One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Two, four, six, eight, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <gasps> ten? All these tens? It's reminding me of the story this week. Come on, let's go meet our friends. Today, let's sing a song called Unstoppable God. Nothing is impossible with God. Nothing. And I think you will see in today's Bible story just how mighty and powerful our God is. So let's sing his praise. Heaven thundered and the world was born. Life begins and ends in the dust you form. Faith commanded and the mountains move. Fear is losing ground to our hope in you. Unstoppable God, let your glory go on and on. Possible things in your name, they shall be done. Nothing shall be impossible. Your kingdom reigns unstoppable. We'll shout your praise forevermore. Jesus, our God, unstoppable. Nothing shall be impossible. Your kingdom reigns unstoppable. We'll shout your praise forevermore. Jesus, our God, unstoppable. Nothing shall be impossible. Your kingdom reigns unstoppable. We'll shout your praise forevermore. Jesus, our God, unstoppable. Unstoppable God, let your glory go on and on. Impossible things in your name, they shall be done. Unstoppable God, let your glory go on and on. Impossible things in your name, they shall be done. Let's pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Nice job. I'm so bored. Hug me too. There has to be something we can do. Well, maybe we can practice our Bible basics together. The Bible basics. God's word is true for all people, for all places, and for all times. The Bible has 66 books written by 40 authors over 1,500 years that fit together to tell one story about who God is and how much he loves you. Nice, nice job. What now? Still bored? Maybe our memory verse? Hi, let's learn this month's memory verse. 
I can do everything through Christ who strengthens me. Philippians 4.13. Now let me teach you some motions to go along with it. I can do everything through Christ who strengthens me. Philippians 4.13. Okay, ready to try it all together? I can do everything through Christ who strengthens me. Philippians 4.13. Great job. Those are great, but what are we going to do now? Oh. Mm -hmm. I have an idea. That's a good idea. Let's play a game. Come on, let's play. Which one? I don't even know how to play any of these games. Well, I want to play Sorry. I like Connect Four. No, let's play Shoots and Ladders. Let's just play all of them. At once? How? Come on, let's just, let's just start. Okay. Let me set up the new room. No, I need to set up the new room. Where's your battleship? Guys? No, no. Hey, guys. play together like this. All we're doing is fighting the whole time. Games have rules. Rules are important. Hey, wait a minute. There's a Bible story about this. Do you want to hear it? Yeah. Well, I think I have some stuff downstairs that can help us. Let's go. Hi, Mrs. Derek. Hi, Aaron. Oh, hey, Whiskers. How are you today? I'm great. Are you guys getting ready to tell another story from the Bible? Yes, actually we are, Whiskers. Today's story comes from the book of Exodus in the Old Testament. Do you want to help us tell the story today? Oh, yes, please. I would love that. Thank you, Whiskers. All right, let's get started. So, there they were. The Israelites were wandering around the desert. There were moms and dads, grandpas and grandmas, aunts, uncles, Cousins, brothers, sisters, all sorts of people out in the middle of the desert. And they were not happy. What weren't they happy about? Well, they were saying things like, I'm hungry. I'm thirsty. I'm tired. My feet hurt. It's hot. Well, that doesn't sound like a lot of fun. You're right, it doesn't. But remember, God had just saved his people. He had sent Moses to rescue them from slavery in Egypt. And he split the Red Sea in half for them to walk through. And God miraculously provided food and water while they were wandering in the wilderness. Well... The Israelites forgot all of that. The people weren't happy. In fact, they were pretty miserable. They didn't care that they were free, and they started to wonder if they were better off back in Egypt. Just like when sin came into the world back in the garden, a lie crept into the hearts of the Israelites. A lie that said, does God really love us? Does he really want us to be happy? Well, that's just not true. God loves his people. And even though God had always provided what they needed, God's children still didn't trust him. They thought they could do a better job of taking care of themselves and making themselves happy. But God knew that there was no such thing as happiness without him. So God decided to talk to his people and show them what he was like. He wanted them to know him better. And so Moses went up to the very top of a tall mountain. The rest of God's people stayed down below. Suddenly, thunder began booming and lightning whizzed through the sky. A great cloud covered the top of the mountain and the ground began to shake. And then the coolest part happened. God spoke to Moses. God said, I created the whole earth and everything in it. Everything belongs to me, but I have chosen you. You are my family and I love you. 
God wanted his people to live in a way that shows everyone else what he is like so that they can know him too. God gave Moses 10 commandments to give to the people. Commandments are like rules. He gave the people 10 ways to know him better, 10 ways to follow him, 10 ways that they could love God and love others. God said, I want you to love me more than anything else in all the world and know that I love you too. That was the first and most important one, but God gave them other rules too. What other rules? Well, actually, I have a song about all of the rules. Would you like to hear it? Sure. I'm your only God, it's true. Don't worship idols, ooh. Respect my name and don't be rude. Keep the Sabbath holy. Please obey your mom and dad. Don't kill people, oh, how bad. Please stay married, you'll be glad. Don't steal things from others. Never ever tell a lie. Don't wish for things your neighbors buy. Follow God's rules and you'll be safe and very happy. I really like that song. Thanks, Mrs. Derrick. You're welcome, Whiskers. That was a good question. Thanks for being such a good listener. So are you guys ready to get back to... Ooh, hold on. I'm getting a video call from Pastor Keith. Hi, Pastor Keith. Hey there. What are you guys up to today? Well, we were just talking about the Ten Commandments. Oh, I love that story. I actually have a little finger poem that I use to help me remember the Ten Commandments, which is the law, the way that God would have his people live in the world to honor him. Would you like me to show you? Okay, you're going to need all ten fingers for this because there are ten commandments. And let's start with the first commandment, which means there is only one God. The second commandment says we should only bow down and worship him. We should not bow down to idols. The third commandment is like your three fingers of your hand make the letter W. You should watch your words and do not misuse the name of the Lord your God. The fourth commandment has your thumb resting on the palm of your hand, just like we're to rest and to trust God with our work and worship and remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. The fifth commandment is like a salute in the army of five fingers, right? Saluting, honoring your father and mother. The sixth commandment requires two fingers and a thumb from each hand. They make guns, do not murder, do not take the life of someone. The seventh commandment has an open palm and two fingers because marriage is between one man and one woman. Do not commit adultery. Eight, you know, in some cultures, if they catch you stealing, they will cut off your thumbs and put you in jail. So do not steal. Nine, be, don't take information and hide it from your friends. Don't bear false witness or lie. That's the ninth commandment. And the 10th commandment is do not covet. Do not grasp for anything that is not yours. Those are the 10 commandments. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. So all of those rules showed God's people how to live and how to be close to him. Since God created us, he knows how life works best, and he wanted to show the people how. Moses told the people that God promises to always look after and take care of us. He asked the people if they could love God and keep his rules. All of God's people promised that they would keep God's rules. Of course, why wouldn't they want to keep God's rules? God had just shown them and told them how much he loved and cared for them. But they couldn't do it. The people couldn't keep all of those rules alone. It didn't matter how hard they tried or how much they wanted to obey or how many times that they promised that next time they would do better. They could never do it. And God knew it. God knew that his people would need help to live our lives and follow him. When sin came into the world back in the Garden of Eden, everything broke. Our relationship with God broke and we would always try to live life without him. God knew that because of sin, we could never follow his commandments and be close to him. But God loved his creation and he made a promise. He promised that it would not always be so. He would come back and save his people. God would send a rescuer. 
his son, Jesus. There was only one person who could keep all of the rules, and it was Jesus. Jesus would stand in our place and be perfect for us. Because of Jesus, we could be close to God again. The rules could never save us. Only God could. Let's see what you learned about today's Bible story. Where did God send Moses to speak to him? Did God send Moses back to Egypt? To the top of a mountain? To a temple? Or inside a tent? That's right, God sent Moses to the top of Mount Sinai while the people stayed down below. Here's your next question. God loved his people so much, he gave Moses something to give to them. What did God give his people? The suggestions, the challenges, the choices, or the Ten Commandments? God spoke to Moses and gave him the Ten Commandments to share with the Israelites. Okay, let's try another one. What is the first commandment? Was it, remember the Sabbath day? You shall not steal. You shall have no other gods before me, or I before E except after C. The first of the Ten Commandments is, you shall have no other gods before me. Last one, who is the only one who can obey all the rules all the time? That's right, only our rescuer Jesus could keep all the rules. Jesus had to take our place and be perfect for us. Thanks for showing me what you learned from today's story. See you next week. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. To God be the glory, great things he has done. Let's worship God for who he is and what he has done. All the glory goes to you, God. You are worthy of all of our praise. There is no God like our God. There has never been anyone, anything like you. Aren't you thankful that we serve a living God who loved us so much that he sent our rescuer, Jesus? Let's worship together as we sing, The Glory is Yours. Oh God, the glory is yours. The kingdom is come and the battle is over. Jesus, in your name we rise and the glory is yours. The glory is yours. Blessing, honor, strength, and power. Yours alone now and forever. Love this world could never stop. There is no one like our God reaching down to touch the broken. Mercy breaking through this moment. Faithful is the one who saves. Worthy is your name. Oh God, the glory is yours. The kingdom is come and the battle is over. Jesus, in your name we rise, and the glory is yours, the glory is yours. Nobody beside you, there has never been anyone, anything like you. Nobody beside you, there has never been anyone, anything like you. Nobody beside you, there has never been anyone, anything like you. Nobody beside you, there has never been anyone, anything like you. Nobody beside you, there has never been anyone, anything like you. Oh God, the glory is yours, the kingdom is come and the battle is over. Jesus, in your name we rise and the glory is yours, the glory is yours. One, two, three, four, whoop. Sorry. <laughs> you were right, Melissa. Playing the game with the rules was way more fun. I like it way better than when we were fighting. Oh, the rules are just what we needed. Hey, that reminds me of our key truth. God, God knows, knows what's best for me. Let's say that again all together. God, God knows, knows what's best for me. Let's pray about that. Repeat after me. Dear Lord. Dear, Dear Lord. 
Thank you for always knowing what is best for us. Thank you for always knowing what is best for us. We praise you for teaching us. We praise you for teaching us through your word, through your word, that you are a promise keeper, that you are a promise keeper. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to be our rescuer, to be our rescuer. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thanks for joining us for Kids Church Online. See you next week. Bye. Yeah.